गुड मॉर्निंग अशोक जी कैसे हैं आप आई एम गुड थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू सो मच फॉर योर टाइम प्लेजर एंड वी आर लुकिंग फॉरवर्ड टू दिस कॉन्वर्जेशन यू कम फ्रॉम एब्सोल्यूट ऑपरेशनल बैकग्राउंड एंड इन द थिक ऑफ द थिंग्स दैट विल रियली हेल्प ऑल द व्यूअर्स एब्सोल्यूट आई विल ट्राई टू डू व्हाटएवर बेस्ट आई कैन यस यस एंड सम ऑफ द क्वेश्चंस आई कीप प्रीटी बेसिक आल्सो सो दैट द इंडस्ट्री पर्सपेक्टिव इज अंडरस्टूड रियली वेल थैंक यू श्योर अमित डू लेट अस नो व्हेन वी आर सपोज टू स्टार्ट श्योर सो आई थिंक Uh, quickly, uh, just to give a brief profile about uh, Mr. Ashok Jain, he is serving as a host. Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. And, uh, 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 he has been associated with with the group uh, uh, quite long. I think uh, uh, long standing with uh, Gujarat Borosil before uh, it got amalgamated uh, uh, with uh, Borosil Renewables. So very uh, crucial role in the uh, recent acquisitions which company has made. Uh, so I think. Uh, uh, we will have an interesting chat and uh, i would request you to start ma'am i think uh, you can start now so i will just add uh, he is also from our community of chartered accountants so <laughs> i am also a chartered accountant by profession and you are also a fellow of institute of chartered accountant and uh, of course your experience spans across finance sales commercial operations and general management and that's how i said that you are in the thick of the things so of course i will start my question uh with a little more first on global demand supply whether it is for a uh, solar cell module or implementation of panels and solar projects how is the global outlook which are some of the strong markets and then of course why is china dumping yeah we sure start so, with that if you don't yeah know. yeah yeah absolutely so uh, from a broader perspective of global uh, business uh, in renewables or particularly solar photovoltaic the uh, lead has been taken by china somewhere in 2013 uh, earlier prior to that uh, germany or say europe and usa were quite uh, advanced in terms of the technologies and manufacturing but uh, in 2013 china uh, with their uh, uh, long term plan five year plan they decided to put this particular uh, business uh, as a priority sector and they started to give a huge support to this sector at all levels like uh, at the capex level infrastructure level labor subsidies interest and uh, many other aspects they started to uh, subsidize and also they ensured that the uh, imports into the country do not take place so they put put heavy duties on the imports uh, of the components and also they uh, introduce export subsidies gradually so they they managed to uh, you know grow very substantially in uh, next 5 years or so and became uh, the force to reckon with in the in the course of this journey the other geographies suffered heavily and most of the activities came to stand still uh, all the solar glass plants operating worldwide got closed during this period uh, because uh, the large players like asahi or pilkington or sangobe guardian everybody was operating some solar glass production but they all had to face a shutdown so as we speak now the uh, supply chain of entire photovoltaic is under the control of chinese uh, chinese people in that sense and uh, they control between 75% to 95% of each of the uh, uh, supply chain uh, component or say like say module or polysilicon so starting from polysilicon which is the base for making solar cell and uh, the solar module itself the other component like glass so they they are having a market share of 75 to 95% uh, depending on what item we are looking at now in terms of the global growth uh, since china has led the entire sector uh, for last 5 7 years uh, the the manufacturing is completely growing in china and uh, they are doing it not only for domestic uh, requirements but also for exports 
so they have been uh, uh, huge exporters for all the geographies where the solar installations are taking place particularly europe usa uh, these are the large destinations for their exports and of course india also remains as the third most uh, uh, sought after market in terms of the overall capacity uh, which which the chinese may be having uh, uh, for say solar module which is the which is the equipment used for uh, power production uh, they may be having close to 600 gigawatt capacity as of now and uh, their uh, last year actual installations were close to 400 gigawatt 400 plus gigawatt globally globally yeah, globally and half of this was done in china itself almost 200 mm -hmm. gigawatt so rest outside of chinese the major installations are again in uh, europe and usa followed by uh, say india and uh, some other geographies where it could be somewhere like 5 10 gigawatts but uh, uh, china remains as the major uh, uh, producer and also user for the solar components or uh, talking specific to solar glass where we operate uh, the situation is that 95 plus percent of solar glass production is controlled by Chinese and uh, they they produce in China as well as in uh, Malaysia and Vietnam. Outside of Chinese mm -hmm. domain, uh, Borosil is, uh, uh, Borosil had been the only company some time back, but uh, now in India there are four, four other players who have started solar glass production. Outside of Indian production uh, for solar glass, uh, there are only two plants. One is in Germany, which is again owned by Borusil. It's a, our wholly owned subsidiary. And there is another production line in Turkey, which is a very small plant operated by local producer, uh, CCJM. So outside of Chinese domain, the production of glass is quite limited. And uh, uh, again, the customers have to depend on uh, imports from that perspective. Single source. Yeah. Countrywide. Yeah, yeah. So this so, is something broadly correct. So, yeah. Correct. So the it is extremely manufacturing wide and laying of uh, solar panel wide also. It is very China led industry uh, and glass is even more China led. But what is it that led to such a crash in price? So well, uh, the the uh, Chinese are growing in leaps and bounds. Earlier, the expansions used to be say five gigawatt each company would expand by five gigawatt. Now each expansion may be 20, 30, 40 gigawatt by the players. So these are large size plants, and the efficiency of large size plants uh, uh, in the terms of operating leverage is also there. Plus the the base prices like say polysilicon, which is the base. Uh, material from where you start, the prices dropped by almost 75% in last one calendar year. Correct. So if the and why so so? Has, price of base material has drawn, dropped, the, similarly, the price of other component uh, upstream has also uh, dropped. But why the price dropped so much uh, is something which could be led to, could be uh, traced to maybe over, over capacity in a particular uh, sector or particular uh, component. And also because the timing timing difference could be there sometimes that uh, there is a long gestation for some products like glass. There is a long gestation to put up any plant. But uh, module plants can be set up in a quick, quicker uh, time, like six months. But glass plant may take 18 months to 24 months. So there may be timing mismatch cases also uh, due to which uh, imbalance in market demand supply could lead to uh, sudden drop in the prices, uh, which may correct after some time or, or continue if the imbalance does not improve. So what is the value addition chain, if you can just take us through, from raw material of polysilicon to polysilicon to module, of course, added a glass and up to panel. If you can just tell us how is the value addition chain currently looking like so for producing module, actually module is the last uh, uh, equipment and it is made by assembling various components. Now those Correct. various components include solar glass, aluminum frame, then uh, EVA, back sheet, and of course solar cell, which is the main component, Correct. part of it. So these are various components which go into solar module. 
and then you laminate you put it into a laminator which is equipment uh, which laminates and uh, makes the uh, entire thing into one one particular piece which is module but prior to solar cell uh, there is a value chain again which is starting from polysilicon so polysilicon okay. is made out of silica sand mm. then you make polysilic after polysilicon you convert that to ingot wafer and solar cell so these are various uh, yes. items which in, uh, which are say stages of production you can say uh, when when you finally come to solar cell for solar glass again so the, the yeah for solar glass sir please go ahead sir uh, which starts again from sol silica sand solar glass production also starts from silica sand of a different grade and then uh, by adding various raw materials you convert that to a glass uh, uh, glass uh, sheet and uh, the main contributor uh, main value addition comes from say uh, soda ash then uh, energy in in uh, producing in the furnace and temp in uh, electricity for tempering so energy and raw materials are the key components for making any solar glass yeah you were saying something so you are saying that basically the polysilicon capacity got uh, added substantially and maybe that the technology is now so well absorbed that the prices started coming down from there itself so i i am not very sure whether the uh, prices can continue to remain like this for long uh because the uh what do you use for polysilicon actually you use silica sand and uh, power correct so cost of production how is that moved so that cost has not gone down substantially in my view and uh, surely by over capacity if the prices have corrected or most die for some time then some capacity will go off the production but remember. what is then that equation for either glass or solar cell are the large part of even chinese manufacturer despite the lower electricity costs are under the selling at below their cost price what is that equation so in terms of the uh, price of module if you are to compare it with say 2022 23 the prices have dropped by almost 60% for solar modules now this is not normal that prices can drop such heavily and similarly for as i said for polycon polysilicon it dropped by 75% so these are something abnormal in terms of the glass prices the price drop has not been so significant uh, in terms of the base price of glass yes the freight was another differentiator for uh, deciding on the price of glass because in covid period the freight rates had uh, run up very high mm -hmm. which uh, increased the landed cost for imports into any geography in mm -hmm. around the world Uh, which is why the cost uh, went up substantially but the base prices uh, of solar glass uh, did not go up uh, uh, substantially for long period yes for some time they went up from uh, by about say uh, 50 60% in 2020 21 but uh, if you were to really look at last one or two years the correction is not significant it may be about 10 12% so glass prices have not fallen as much as polysilicon or module prices yeah at the at the fob level they have not fallen so much from when you talk of glass prices uh, and import into india suppose the fob prices have fallen only by say 12% or like that but there are two factors which have affected the landed cost one is the freight which was running mm. very high in 2020 to 22 uh, which is corrected to even lower than pre pandemic levels it went down to 600 dollars or like that from china to india and all and whereas it it went to 5000 dollars in the covid period so obviously the it affected the landed cost second important factor is that there was anti dumping duty on the imports of solar glass from china Uh, which expired how much the, was the percentage uh, well about 12% or so 11 12% so even that was adding to the landed cost of solar glass coming into the country which no longer exist uh, after august 22 so which has also brought down the landed cost and which is also compelled the domestic producers to 
uh, match on a on a landed cost basis. So both the regions have uh, caused a, a steep decline in the domestic selling prices. You can say, uh, uh, which is where the profitability of domestic producers have come under pressure. Correct. So domestic selling price is uh, hard come, come down by how much? Uh, well, uh, the prices have come down by almost uh, 25 to 30 percent. And this is the, it has been around this level for a while. And right now, how is the difference between landed cost of uh, Chinese uh, glass and domestic price? So, uh, as I said, we are, we are benchmarking our, our domestic producers have to really benchmark the selling prices based on landed cost of imports. So the prices roughly are the same what the landed cost okay. is. Barring some premium which the domestic uh, producer gets uh, because of the advantage which a local sourcing uh, extends to any buyer in India because of the flexibility, reliability, and uh, you know warehousing cost and other, other benefits. Got so it. Those, yeah. But is come, the meaning of this conversation last, if I understand right, is that the current manufacturing cost somewhere in India is not as competitive for you all. Ki you needed the cushion of ADD as well as the cushion was naturally coming from the high freight cost. Both the cushions went away. That's why you have only, uh, you know, prices have fallen by whatever, 25-30% to match. Yeah, so actually, yeah, what is the difference in cost of production? Yeah, actually, we have and to, what is the way to become really competitive? So let us not be under the impression that domestic production is not competitive. Domestic okay, production good. is absolutely competitive to Chinese or any other producers. The fact is that the Chinese are heavily subsidized at all levels. The Malaysians are heavily subsidizing their solar glass production be it at power cost or gas cost or even the infrastructure or uh, labor cost and everything. And on top of all these things, there is a 13% subsidy from China to any other part of the world. When you export solar glass, the exporter gets 13% cash subsidy. Now you have to fight, you have to compare these our cost versus all these extra advantages. Absolutely. So unless there is some, some sort of duty, now on import of solar glass into India, there is a zero basic custom duty. The custom duty has been exempted for last 25 years in India on solar glass imports. How can you manage all these disadvantages without having any uh, level playing field like basic custom duty? So you have to look at the, the policy, the, the framework, the fiscal measures which each, each geography are taking and then hold responsible the domestic producers. So if you were to talk about our, uh, say, uh, operational efficiencies, uh, we consume less uh, amount of energy to convert uh, sand into glass. Chinese are using almost 40% extra energy, almost 40%, which is a huge difference in terms of uh, any manufacturing technology. And that is because of better technology or better innovation in terms of production by yes. Indian manufacturer or you. They, they follow certain prototype uh, of the of the uh, designing and uh, technology and they keep continuing on that we have been uh, in the glass business for nearly 50 60 years and uh, we we have been trying to make or optimize all, all the aspects of manufacturing solar glass because we know that we are up against the competition which is coming from china and which is heavily subsidized so we uh, we have to stand against them that's the way we, we look at it. So increasing the throughput from the machines or the furnace, uh, making it more efficient in terms of the uh, cost of production and also working on all optimization of cost packaging. Like we, we sell almost 80% of the domestic goods without any packaging. So we transport it on steel pallets and the steel pallets are collected back. So, you know, at all levels in the manufacturing, uh, we try to economize and see that we still remain competitive to the subsidized imports. Now, we have again filed uh, application for anti-dumping duty against China and Vietnam. 
and uh, the case has been just initiated yesterday the inquiry has been initiated yesterday by the dgtr and in due course maybe about 6 months or so we will know whether any anti dumping duty can be imposed against these countries also we have we were hopeful of getting the exemption of bcd removed by 31st march 24 which is what the government had said one year back that all the exemptions will have sunset by 31st march 24 but because of the interim budget or any other uh, region, the exemptions have been continued up to 30th September for all the basic custom duty exemptions, which were to end on 31st March, have been continued up to 30th September 24. So in the regular budget, which the government will present in July or so, we expect these duty exemptions to go away uh, and, the, and the basic custom duty to start getting levied in India which currently in the institute is at 15%. So if that comes in uh, force, that will allow us to uh, raise uh, our prices to a higher landed cost. So basic custom duty of 15% when it comes, when exemption goes, will give first breather. And what kind of further anti-dumping duty can help what is industry expecting? So this is a process-driven and uh, uh, formula-driven exercise which the DGTR is conducting. They will collect the information from all the exporters. Then they will have a meeting of uh, various stakeholders to discuss the uh, whatever they have uh, analyzed and whatever information they have collected. And the basis that they will determine uh, whether there is any merit in the case, first of all, and if the merit is there, then how much anti-dumping duty uh, should be levied in order to uh, allow the industry in India uh, grow or not to, or to have a level playing field, so to say, against the imports. And uh, this number cannot be uh, decided by, like say, applicant like us. The number of what duty will be there will be decided by the authorities. No, but you all must be proposing something. Another 15-20% is what you all are, uh, you think can get a good breather? What is it that can give industry See, what, a strong what need, foothold? What we need is 25% back actually, which could be in the form of basic custom duty and anti-dumping. So okay. whichever way it comes, uh, it will help the domestic industry. A too. total of 25% max is what will bring you on a healthy note. Yeah, that will make the investment uh, uh, proposition uh, further further investment into this uh, business as a, as a good investment proposition, you can say. Can you just also throw some light on what is total demand of uh, these glasses in India? How is it likely to grow? What is total production and how much are we importing? So until say uh, calendar year 22, we were the only manufacturer in India of solar glass. And in 2023, uh, four new plants have started. These capacities are still not fully op optimized and they are running at a lower level of their capacity. But on the capacity-wise front, if you were to see, uh, the operational capacity now is 2,300 ton per day, of which 1,000 ton is borosil, and 1,300 tons is made up by four new players who have entered the solar glass production business. And what another- those, sir? Who are those? Yeah. So the companies who have come into production already are Gobind Glass, Triveni Renewables, Vishaka Glass, and Gold Plus Glass. And another last is? One, Gold Plus. Gold okay. Plus. The fifth one who is going to start is Emerge Glass. Emerge, which is another 300 ton. So India will have 2,600 ton per day capacity operational in this calendar year. Hmm. And what's our demand? So when, when I say 2600 ton per day, it gives a net production of about 65% of that. Because glass Achha. glass production, uh, when you do, there are a lot of you know trim losses and other vestiges, which Correct. cannot be used in solar modules. So net output is about 65%. So assuming it is two thirds of that, uh, it's about say uh, 17-1800 tons or whatever and the glass currently which is consumed in the country is close to 2700 ton per day 
so as far as i think solar uh, panel is concerned india has put a stop on import from china is that correct uh, can you repeat your question please on solar panels yeah there is a ban on importing it from china or module where where is the ban amit no solar modules are allowed to be imported they okay. are imported yeah. So, I think there is no when there was a duty. Yes. There, is a, there, is a, there is a basic custom duty of 40% on import of solar modules. And on solar cell, it is 25%. In each case, there is a 10% surcharge. So, effective duty is more. Okay. Now, the government had also brought in a mechanism which is called ALMM. That is approved a list of models and manufacturers under which the local producers of solar modules were only registered until now. And that when the ALMM was imposed, that also restricted the imports to come into India because the exporters were not approved under the scheme. But government suspended this for a year, uh, that is 23-24, and the suspension has resulted into large amount of imports coming from, say, Southeast Asian countries in form of modules which is affecting the uh, domestic producer. Glass consumption. Do, yeah, so the less production would mean glass consumption would be restricted. But in right. nevertheless, the glass consumption is 2,700 ton per day in the country, whereas, whereas the production is only 1,700 ton. So from the perspective of overall requirement of glass, we still have a larger market to look at. And this market is only going to double in next two years' time. So glass demand is going to be there. Uh, for us to look at. Uh, once the ALMM gets uh, removed or say expansion, uh, suspension gets removed, which is uh, announced already by the government, that after 31st March 24, the ALMM will uh, be applicable for certain segments and will not be applicable for some, some segments. So at current prices of glass, India operations uh, is not giving any good uh, returns. So all these new capacities which have come up last year will also find it tough to make money and their gestation overall will or break even will go up. Yeah, absolutely because these uh, plants have come up by way of greenfield uh, expansions and uh, obviously their cost of project itself is higher than ours. Uh, moreover, the initial period you don't get 100% efficiencies in production and uh, cost and everything. So obviously these these producers are facing challenge and uh, we along with all these producers have been uh, representing to the government at uh, various levels uh, to look at this situation uh, with uh, some some uh, positive attitude that uh, these uh, companies have come up for uh, on the request of ministry actually that solar gas production should be increased in the country but now they are uh, probably left high and dry because anti-dumping has been discontinued uh, in 22 and this BCD has not been brought into effect. So everybody uh, in our view has been uh, suffering because of this particular phenomena and is uh, concerned in terms of the uh, outlook on the on the sector. Two, three more questions from my side and then I'll give it to Amit. One yeah. of course is that when in India to compete the Chinese imports, we need a anti-dumping duty support because they are so competitive. Why did we buy in Germany? Is there any uh, support or such kind of protection there from as compared to Chinese manufacturers? How will it stand on its feet? Yeah, so you use the word competitive for Chinese, which I object because they are subsidized. Okay. And uh, subsidized. And, I will uh, correct my terminology. So in terms of the German acquisition, the cost, uh, cost of production in Germany is high as we know for any production. But similarly, the selling price also is high. So which allows you to still get certain margin in the business. And that uh, that is also led by uh, an anti-dumping duty against Chinese on solar glass imports into, into Europe. So Europe has levied anti-dumping duty on Chinese glass. Turkey has levied anti-dumping duty on Chinese glass. USA has levied an anti-dumping duty. 
and india also had anti dumping duty so particularly the all the authorities have discovered that chinese have been dumping and uh, there is a there because of that there is a higher landed cost of imports in europe uh, which allows you to sell at a higher price so in european business we had uh, examined these aspects that whether uh, we can still make profit there or not so that was one another thing is whether the company the product the equipment everything is uh, of a standard or not so the product and customers were very good and uh, we we had uh, very positive reports from uh, all the customers about the uh, business the which this company was operating and the entry price was quite attractive for us to get into so with all these reasons uh, we entered there and also there is a room to you know uh, expand the capacity once the situation is right because uh, european governments uh, have been talking about uh, uh, solar accelerator program earlier uh, which in which they wanted 20 to 30 gigawatts of installations or or say all, all the supply chain to be available locally now they are talking of resilience bonus where they want to have their local supply chain of 30 gigawatts so current installations are more than 45 50 gigawatt in europe but the local production is hardly 3 4 gigawatts so we, there is a room to grow the business over there with all these thoughts uh, we had uh, uh, we had acquired so, so european acquisition right now with europe german duty anti dumping duty and german prices and german cost of production is profitable at envisage with little fall in the glass prices or not so the situation unfortunately in uh, europe is not very conducive right now because the chinese have been dumping the modules all around the world and europe uh, europe is the biggest dumping ground for dumping of the modules surplus modules so if you have read or uh, those who who track the sector they would know that 80 to 100 gigawatt of modules they are dumping into europe whereas the installations are half of it so obviously there is a surplus uh, amount of modules which are lying in europe and which are which are at 10 12 cents prices per watt peak whereas the germany or say european manufacturers cannot make the module at less than 30 cents so there is a huge uh, disadvantage of uh, local pricing and uh, our customers are facing challenge in terms of uh, selling their uh, modules and uh, uh, they have reduced their requirements considerably because they are not able to operate the plant fully uh, which Correct. is putting prices pressure back on us in terms of uh, prices supply who to supply the class yeah. correct so uh, just to summarize the whole thing a the first way as it will unlock is when the chinese glass prices start inching up as they themselves don't make uh, money they might gradually start uh increasing prices which will breathe a little relief to you all and the second is particularly for india facility there is no reason why indian government should not put anti dumping duty when us europe xyz every other country has uh there is logically all reasons to put anti dumping duty is that correct this is the two things which will change uh the profitability yeah so first thing is about the chinese uh, uh, pricing whether the pricing can change or cannot change so there are couple of factors which would play a role one is that the uh, uh, the the substantial expansion plans uh, which everybody in china was having on solar glass front you know, was led by the two large players who are listed both are listed the shiny glass and flat glass so they also have their own shareholders and uh, their own balance sheets to show Uh, for collecting mm-hmm. money so this is one aspect another thing is that the government in china also has been uh, aware of the situation that over capacity will create a problem for everything including environment so and also the shortage on the sand and so, soda ash and surplus and all those things so they have been controlling further expansions and unless it's like licensing right now in china for any new capacity to get started so they are controlling addition of fresh capacities and only allowing the capacity expansions when you are probably closing the earlier inefficient plants so with this situation the supply side is slightly getting addressed because 
if you, if the supplies come irrationally into the market the situation cannot improve so these these are the aspects which we have to uh, build in in our calculation that uh, the situation of demand supply may, may correct over a period of time and uh, once the inventory levels are or the sales levels are good uh, for these companies they may have reasons to uh, look for better prices so and in terms of the anti dumping duty uh, as i mentioned before it's a process driven and wto compliant mechanism under which uh, it is based on numbers and information so if the numbers do add up to the situation that duty should be imposed and government uh, uh, at both levels like i have to also take the finance ministry into account because last time uh, commerce ministry that is dgtr recommended two years continuation of anti dumping duty on chinese goods chinese solar glass but finance ministry uh, decided not to agree with that so even though commerce ministry decides that particular uh, thing is hurting hurting the domestic production but if the finance ministry does not think so then there is a challenge so we have to we have to see that uh, the the in the light of the plan that we have such a huge rooftop solar program yeah where the cost should be one of the key consideration for uh, making it successful whether it is uh, the cost of the rooftop solar panels or all the ingredients or the financing cost to achieve it do you think that this will be anti dumping duty will be considered Uh, well uh, if if the idea is only to make the things cheaper then 40% duty should not be levied at all on the module imports mm -hmm. why should you have you should allow free free of uh, duty all the imports and have your program so you can substantially reduce the cost and why single out solar glass for that matter so i am only a 10% contribution in module cost so my 15% is only making a difference of 1 and 1/2% but you have a duty of 40% on the import of solar modules so if you were to really look at only making the solar rooftop solar for the uh, one crore households cheaper you have other mechanism to follow but everything has to be considered by the government and any final goods industry like solar module or solar power will only be successful in long run by having a sub robust supply chain and solar glass is one of the key components on which the solar module is produced so we believe that the government will look at it objectively second thing is that whenever you talk about the power prices and affordability of the power cost for the consumers the solar power is available at 2 rupees 52 paisa okay you get power and i get power at 10 rupees okay but in in the case of solar power when the module prices were 21 cent 27 cents the power was still being sold at 2 rupees 52 paisa even today when the module prices have dropped to 10 cent 12 cents the power is still being sold by 2 rupees 52 paisa now if solar glass is given a 15% basic custom duty the power effect on power cost is 1 1 and 1/2 paisa so from 2 rupees 52 paisa it it might move to 2 rupees 54 paisa no, not very uh, substantial increase which which Uh, reduces your affordability to such an extent that you don't buy so we i mean we have been presenting our case to the government on uh, on these lines that it uh, it's not so uh, significant in terms of the cost on power but if there is certain mechanism to grow the industry which provides a lot of uh, value addition in terms of the uh, cost of production it provides a lot of employment this solar glass industry generates huge employment uh, in, in the in the country and uh, there are all the people available and willing to expand solar glass capacity in the country more than more than one at least half a dozen <clears throat> people again expand if the right kind of policies are there so and you also also want to have atmanirbhar bharat so why not have it true absolutely sir i'll give the floor to amit and uh, our participants for their question thank you so much we got very good insight on the industry and i am still around yes yes i got couple of questions sir uh, and then i request all the participants also to either raise hand or uh, put their questions in the chat box sir just in continuation to what you explained uh, uh, very rightly 
just wanted to understand uh, in your thinking what government wants basically because they are talking about you know uh, 50 gigawatt addition each year uh, they're talking about incentivizing industries in PLI uh, the government is talking a lot about you know completely changing the renewable landscape and I think that first place as you explained uh, almost 80 90 percent is imported from almost six seven years when the solar installation started coming in the country what uh, you feel uh, you know government basically wants uh, uh, the logic behind uh, removing this uh, uh, anti-dumping duty despite there's so much uh, which they want to develop as an ecosystem across all the uh, solar manufacturing uh, uh, value chain and we saw Adani's and Reliance is also going in a big way with respect to installing uh, facilities here. So what is your thinking when you, sp uh, is your uh, conclusion when you speak to the government and what is the government's uh, rationale behind uh, whatever is happening in the uh, solar uh, manufacturing industry? So government has clearly laid out the roadmap for uh, 280 gigawatt of solar power by 2030. And the government wants to stand by that commitment, I think. And uh, all over the country now we hear Modi ka guarantee or Modi Sarkar ka guarantee. So I would think that uh, government is serious about the whole situation. And why not? Because the power demand in the country is rising. You, you need power every day, which is increasing in terms of demand for everything. So of course, the source of supply of power is either uh, renewables or fossil fuel and fossil fuel power is rest to be restricted because you want to become a greener uh, or you want to cut down on carbon so obviously solar power and wind power are key areas of growth for the country and we have no doubt that the government wants to have the 280 gigawatt by 2030 but ob obviously the run rate uh, uh, of installation in the country has not been up to the uh, challenge as of now because of whatever factors uh, which may be hindering the growth. So we have seen that about 12-13 gigawatt only got installed last year in 22-23 and again this year also we may have the similar amount of installations. Now if you have to meet the gap, gap between the current uh, uh, total installations versus the target, every year 30 to 35 gigawatt must be installed in the country and uh, with the PLI scheme having been uh, put into place, 40% BCD having put into place, and also ecosystem of solar polysilicon, solar cell, everything uh, expected to come online. Uh, we believe that all these things are possible and uh, module capacity in the country is already crossed 50 gigawatt. So, and it might reach 100 gigawatt in next two, three years. So obviously there is a, uh, there is a uh, sense that uh, this 30, 40 gigawatt annually uh, can be installed by, by the country. And uh, we also have a scope for exports of solar modules. Currently, almost 25% uh, uh, of the domestic production is getting exported uh, in, the, in the case of modules. So export also have a good, uh, uh, good outlook in that sense. So I, I think uh, clearly the country is looking to have a, a, serious growth in terms of installations and production both absolutely and so you you keep highlighting as i can see in your presentation about the 2 mm temper glass versus 3 mm and uh, the upcoming uh, innovations like bifocal uh, floating solar and then thin glass can this really change the landscape that you can create you know uh, can the industry change or maybe the borosil with this kind of product where the might be the Chinese competition is less or it remains the similar even for the all this uh, uh, innovation which is happening in the solar module side. So the one of the major change which has come in last few years on in terms of uh, reducing the cost of power is the development of efficient sales and efficient technology. Solar sales have become more efficient Earlier, the uh, power output from solar cell was about, say, 17, 18% or like that. Now, the efficiency is going to 24, 25%. And newer technologies have come into play. And this bifacial cell, bifacial module, which has now become popular, where you use 2 millimeter glass, thinner glass, in 
in the glass mo in the modules so conventionally you are using one sheet of glass which is 3.2 mm glass now most modules which are made in china almost you, i may say 80 90% are in bifacial that means they are producing and using 2 mm glass uh, as a main product now which was the case earlier for 3.2 so now the demand has shifted to 2 mm completely in the case of china in india also we we see almost 50% of the glass consumption taking place in form of 2 mm glass already but out of this maybe uh, majority maybe 60 70% is getting exported uh, in the form of modules to usa and other places but the indian indian installer or indian epc contractor or indian developers also are now looking for glass glass modules so 2 mm glass has become uh, quite popular and it will it will be similar like china in few years time i think in india as well and we uh, at borosil make 2 mm glass and supply for uh, domestic uh, consumers as well as we export 2 mm glass so uh, we are we are there and uh, uh, the, the kind of exports we see, uh, export demand we see in 2 millimeter also is rising, as is the case in India. So I think the over uh, other countries also will gradually follow that trend. That's the indication I can give. Right. So for European acquisition, you, you uh, I think, uh, highlighted uh, 27 cent uh, uh, dollars uh, per watt. And uh, the Chinese uh, uh, cost of production has now gone to 10, 12 cent dollars per watt. So then what, when will we, you know, our facility will be reaching this kind of prices despite anti-dumping in Europe. The cost of production is still quite high. So what was the rationale behind these acquisitions, considering that still uh, X of China, there is only 5% industry. And you said only few plants, but uh, again, the cost of production is uh, more than 2.5x. So the numbers which you are mentioning are the cost of production of modules, not glass. Okay. This cost of production has gone down. It's not cost of production which has gone down. Actually, the prices have gone okay. down. Okay. So this uh, module price of 10, 11 cent is uh, something which uh, which is being offered by Chinese. Uh, maybe to to sell their inventories or extra surplus production probably and which is why the challenge is there in terms of the european uh, segment as well so when we when we acquired there was a certain economics uh, of making the module and selling into the country uh, based on some pricing mechanism from china now government is working out a plan in in europe to have a certain segment of solar module consumption where only domestically produced solar modules and solar glass will be used. So now suppose you, you like say in India, you have this rooftop scheme where the government has allowed 60% uh, subsidy for domestic and the, this, this rooftop scheme, which government has just announced also as per our information mandates use of domestically produced modules. Okay. Similar to that, the European government also has a program where for domestically uh, for rooftop installations and other things, they will use only roof modules made in Germany or made in, say, European countries, where this, our glass will also be mandated, like local glass also will be mandated. So all those things will fall in place. We expect this annou these announcements to come in due course. And once these uh, things have started to play out, the situation will again change there. I just wanted to understand on competitive landscape, you highlighted that you were the only player till CY22 and then at least three to four uh, plants came in and increased the overall industry capacity. So are we expecting more competitiveness uh, even in CY24? Are there more plants on the anvil which will add capacity and wanted to understand uh, your capacity utilization as of now or by this quarter? So we, we are operating at full capacity. 95-96% capacity we operate generally and any any glass plant uh, would would like to operate at maximum capacity because the fixed cost of a plant and fixed cost of running the furnace uh, is uh, is constant and uh, unless you draw the glass fully, you draw the glass maximum, 
your economics will not be right your course will not be right but uh, for new plants it takes a little longer for uh, to come to that situation uh, and uh, that, that's where the other players are currently in terms of the further competition i think only one plant is expected to come in uh, this calendar year uh, as i mentioned earlier 300 tons plant and besides that we there are no further announcements to to add any capacity in terms of the competition we uh, we have been competing already with chinese which are subsidized and the indian production was only handled by us earlier almost 80% of the glass coming into the country was from uh, from chinese production and now the local industry is growing so the competition environment will always remain whether it is uh, international competition or local competition and we have to we have to see how 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 best we can do in the competitive environment we of course have certain advantages uh, being the first mover in the uh, in the business in india and uh, having uh, optimized many thing many aspects of manufacturing products quality cost and uh, uh, how to you know pay shift and all those things so we we feel that we are uh, we will we will stay more competitive compared to others sure so we have one question from uh, padam mehta uh padam i have unmuted you, you can go ahead with your question padam we can move on amit so we have one more question from uh, mr amar uh you can go ahead mr amar hello hello yes amar uh, sir wanted to understand a couple of things uh, like first of all let's say excluding this uh, advantage which china has if you compare bomb cost of india versus china what would be that sir today class class yeah, cost uh, yeah so practically there is no major change because uh, the major costs are there are three major costs one is the soda ash which is the international commodity and prices are roughly the same whether you buy in china or in india the second thing is about the gas so so you use the natural gas for uh, producing the glass and those prices are international prices again but because the chinese uh, import costs are lower because of their contracts with the uh, gas suppliers abroad uh, they they are getting gas at a cheaper price compared to us and uh, electricity prices are also cheaper in china to some extent compared to india because we have our own inflated cost here and uh, in in malaysia the these uh, items still get subsidized so there is some advantage in terms of the pricing uh, of natural gas and uh, power in those countries and uh, there are some subsidies on labor front and uh, interest cost i think uh, in in china particularly uh, which makes slight difference but major thing is uh, major items or costs are more or less competitive okay and let let's say whatever it is uh, is it like chinese manufacturing would be like 20% cheaper at a manufacturing level versus the india uh, is it like that i wouldn't uh, agree with 20% they may be having some advantage 5 7% maybe 10% at the most and with this 5 7% manufacturing advantage on top of this you are saying they are having a export incentive of 30% plus uh plus 13% 13 13% 13% and plus what additional advantage they have sir so in terms of that cost advantage of 7 to 10% uh, we we try to counter that by having higher efficiency in uh, furnace fuel consumption and also uh, we have a lot of uh, saving on the packing cost because we don't uh, use packing wood which necessarily used by chinese to export to india or to any part of the world so we try to you know balance it out with the other cost advantages which we have uh, which we have been able to uh, arrive at over a period of time and uh, remain competitive so if you are to really examine our uh, profitability versus chinese you can you can probably study the uh, results of shini solar xyg and flat glass which are both listed on the hong kong stock exchange and compare the profitability with us so you will find flat. that profitability is roughly the same okay flat glass right sir. yeah flat okay and sir secondly like you know as you said that india still you know 
consumes almost 2700 tons per day and it is increasing yeah uh, and basically if you see the overall capacity today is around about what uh, 2600 tons per day right so oh, it is 1700 in that context because uh, in this 1700 of lead glass yeah so basically then why india will put some anti dumping duty because you know still india net net the capacities are lesser as compared to the demand and demand is growing so anti dumping duty is not a factor of demand and supply even with having 25% capacity earlier or 20% we had the anti dumping duty against china when there were no produ produ other producers in india in 2017 we were only producing 180 tons per day still we were having anti dumping duty so it is not a factor of how much you produce in india or how much you have to import it's a question of your having level playing field against the dumping and whether the dumping can be permitted or cannot be permitted but given that now the government focus is too much on solar right we want to at one side we are saying we have to expand our solar capacity and on other side if we are putting up anti dumping duty on the ancillary position of you know let's say glass or cell or module then how the capacity at overall level will go up so my question it's is a, that amar uh, amar sorry amar so it's a question of your having energy security in the country or not having the energy security in the country you you can depend on china like uh, europe dependent on russia for gas and then face the music some day in life so if you want to have the energy source in your control you should have all the enablers the components the the constraints in your control or at least partly you should have under your control but if you want to just depend on source of supply which is the cheapest in the world anywhere in the world nothing will get produced why solar power why solar glass why solar modules nothing will get produced except in china so that is not the objective of every country to depend only on china keep exporting them foreign currency and you don't have jobs in the country is that the objective of the government Hmm. So basically, what I'm trying to understand that what is the government's, uh, you know, stance on this? I mean, when you are talking to the bureaucrats, what they are giving you the feedback of, you know, whether the anti-dumping duty will come because you know, as you are saying, on other side, on one side, India have to expand the solar capacity and become by two thousand thirty, you know, whatever target Mr. Modi ji is having. So in that context, what 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 dialogues you are hearing from the bureaucrats that you know how the things will pan out so this i explained before also because basic custom duty is the exemption which is available for last 25 years and some day it is to end and the date was 31st march 24 now it is postponed to 30th september any product you import whether you import uh, maybe a small item uh, like pin also there may be import duty of 7 and up 10% so why not on solar glass that is one thing second thing is that the 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 talks with the ministry or any authority uh, with regard to anti dumping duty cannot be uh, cannot be conclusive that duty will come not come or how they view it they will as i mentioned earlier explain de in detail that it's a process uh, which is uh, which is a open process where every participant every stakeholder has a role to say role to pay and the government or authority designated authority will analyze what is the real situation and what what is to be done so based on that only it will be done and as regards uh, having basic custom duty or anti dumping duty on glass the increase in cost of power as i mentioned before is only 1 and 1/2 to 2 paisa which is not moving the needle from yes to no that you should not have solar power in the country and that uh, 2 rupees 52 paisa has remained constant despite module prices having gone down by 40% so what are you talking about here the prices have gone down without without your uh, without your effort on module front and your mm. power could have been cheaper by now but it is not so why you are worried so much of dead one and a half paisa to two paisa of solar glass duty it may still remain at 2 rupees 52 paisa who knows got that got that sir fine sir thank you sir thanks a lot so we have the next question from uh, mr neel othswal go ahead neel uh how do the hello am i audible yeah yeah you are audible go ahead so just just wanted to understand how do the current uh, module prices of uh, indian manufacturers and chinese manufacturers after the 40% bcd compare and secondly if there is a 
you know like what you have petitioned that if you have a 25% uh, uh, add on glass then how does that change the math for the uh, domestic module producers uh, what would be the cost increase like for them so the domestic uh, producers are probably selling at about 18 cents or so and uh, imported module also would be around 17 cents or so in terms of uh, landed cost after paying the duty so both are competitive and uh, because the solar sale prices also have been have nose dives so the domestic manufacturers are getting solar sale at cheaper price and which is allowing them to have a lower cost of making the modules so both are competitive right now as far as the pricing is concerned and uh, this uh, anti-dumping duty or BCD on solar glass, uh, we have discussed enough, I think, that uh, it will have a difference of uh, on the 10% of the, on the 10% portion of the module at 15%. So one and a half percent, it, it will have a difference. Okay, so not, not material in your opinion. Understood, sir. Thank you. Sir, uh, I'll take last question, if you allow. Uh, Padam Mehta has written in the chat box, what are the raw materials uh, used in glass production and uh, are these chemical raw materials available in India or are we dependent on import for the raw material also? Is yes, quartz also one of the raw materials? Yes, of course. The, the best part of solar glass business is that all the raw materials are available in the country and uh, 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 the, there is a local production which can, which can also rise if required and uh, things are uh, uh, like all components of manufacturing solar glass are rather available in the country and quartz as i as you said quartz can be used or sil silica sand also can be used so or a com combination of two can also be used sure sir thank you very much for your time today amisha ma'am i think we end uh, this, uh, we yes. end the session now so sir thank you so much i know the industry is passing through a little difficult time and uh, some of the steps are uh, you know very evident that india as a country should take to protect our domestic industry and the kind of growth which has been lined up but you gave a very good insight thank you so much Thank you so much for your thank time. You very much. I thank you all the participants. Yes, sir, you wanted to say something. Yeah, yeah. I, I also wanted to thank the participants for <laughs> having patiently yes. listening to this. And I hope I have been able to add value to your knowledge and uh, able to reply to all the questions. Yes, sir, very yes, much. Sir. Thank you. Thank you for your time, sir. Thanks. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. Yeah. Bye bye.